All right, we're picking back up on our brewing slide here with the different tools and methods. So we were running out of time on the last one. We have uh, we try to keep each recording to 15 minutes. So in finishing this slide, we talked about the different brewing methods uh, from left to, or from right to left. We talked about the hybrid, which infuses more than one method, uh, the vacuum, and then the filter, and then the immersion. So let's talk about, I want to ask a question while we're on this slide. Um, which types of uh, brewing devices might require more coarsely ground coffee? And you can say a specific instrument or a type of brewing method. So if you said maybe a French press or a um, immersion brewer, that would be correct. And that's because when generally when you're immersing the coffee in water you'll use a longer time period and uh, the coffee the water and coffee have more time to interact and the water can extract or dissolve those soluble um, matters off the coffee and so a good answer to which requires a coarse coffee ground would be uh, French press you also might consider those using metal filters because metal filters also are um, what they're less forgiving or they they're less restrictive than paper filters or cloth filters but uh, French press would be a great answer for that one and then next which of these would require a more fine ground um, something with a high pressure like a espresso machine a mocha pot and then uh, the Turkish coffee, the Ebrick, is also special. You know, that one, that one does require a very fine ground coffee. So if you were asked about fine ground, uh, Ebrick, Turkish coffee, and espresso, mocha pot. And then our brewing method should always match our selected brewing device. And so, you know, some people get confused about how to grind coffee, and we're going to talk more about extraction. But really, your grind should be tailored to your device and that doesn't change unless you change your filter right you change from cloth to metal or from metal to paper that'll inf that'll affect it but we're going to look at the relationships that encourage uh, some of those considerations but really brewing method should match our brewing device all right so as we choose a brewing method and the device we must properly match the grind particle size to fit the brew method. Correct size is determined how? By the device first. So there might be a slight adjustment considered after depending, uh, after considering the roast level, but first you choose a device and that device should determine your grind size. I really want to make that clear. So for example, right, we're looking up, at, up there at the chart. What would happen if we used coffee in our Turkish uh, ebrick, which was too coarsely ground? Okay, so what would happen if we used coarsely ground coffee in a brewing device, which required fine ground coffee? It would cause it to be under extracted. We would have acidic flavors. It would have low body. It would be a weak solution. In turn, what would happen if we used finely ground coffee in our cafetiere, our French press. It would probably be over extracted. It would become bitter and harsh. And it would allow the coffee fines even to pass through the metal filter so that we're drinking coffee particles. Why is this? It's because the relationship between strength and extraction has a lot to do with time and temperature. Okay, so time and temperature are generally again regulated by the brewing device and the extraction will be controlled if we uh, use the proper temperature with the water with the time with the grounds that are determined for that brewing device let's keep it at that at the foundation level we don't have to go too specific but again um, looking at the right hand side here if the grind is too coarse your brew your final uh, coffee that you come up with will probably be more light colored it might be uh, rather quick like say it was running through a filter and it was too coarsely ground the water will flow through very quickly and it'll be under extracted 
However, skip down to the bottom if the grind is too fine. Let's consider that same V60 or filtration. Uh, the brew will be darker in color. It might be muddy. And the time will take long, and it'll be over-extracted. You'll get some harsh, unbalanced flavors. But really, when you know the grind is just right, there should be a balanced extraction. Proper time is reached for that brewing device, and there will be a balance of flavors. Okay. So the chart on the left, top left, is if you have uh, too much coffee and uh, if you have too little coffee, what you should do to add more coffee. The goal is to always move toward the center. So if our, let's start on too much coffee. If our strength is strong, but even still our extraction can be under extracted. So it might be strong and very acidic. Uh, what we should do is add a little less coffee and extend our time, right? Or use a little more water, pour a little more water through it. If we use too much water, then we might have, um, you know, under or over extracted coffees. It might become bitter. We got to come back to that optimal brew. So you can spend some time and look at this chart. It's very logical the way it works. I won't spend too much time talking about it just on this slide. A very interesting experiment, uh, experiment that you can do on your own, whether it's um, pour over or espresso. Something that you can separate the stages would be to separate the first phase, second phase, and third phase of your extraction. Okay, so let's say you're doing a pour over and it takes three minutes, or you're gonna you're going to have uh, 300 milliliters of water used. So what you would do is you would put the first 100 milliliters of water used and you would remove that and then you would continue you would put a new cup underneath and you would continue to pour another 100 and then you would remo remove that placing a third cup you would pour the final 300 final 100 so a total of 300 milliliters was poured through this coffee bed if you sampled each of those coffees it's a very interesting experiment you would notice how there are high solids more sugars, more acids that are dissolved in the front end, the first phase. And then the average solubles, some of the more medium, more muted flavors uh, come out in the second. And then the third phase, that last 100 milliliters, will be a little bit more harsh, maybe more woody flavors, cellulose, it might be more bitter, uh, definitely low in body. and. Um, Neither one of those, first, second, and third, would be pleasant to drink in and of itself. However, if you take those three and then you pour them together and you sample it, you'll have a balanced, you should have a balanced, sweet, sour, bitter, body is appropriate cup of coffee. And so this is just understanding how water and those coffee, uh, the coffee grounds are reacting to dissolve the soluble matter from the coffee. Understanding that process is really helpful as you come into the concept of the gold cup. The gold cup was uh, has a really interesting history that we look at more at the intermediate level and uh, just looking at perceptions of people on the types of coffee that most suited their desired strength and their desired flavor profile of a cup of coffee what was found is that central range and this is a picture from the SEA you can see the SCAE uh, golden cup range but the AE and AA merged to become the SCA so the gold cup standard is really to help us understand the ratio of coffee to water and the most common that leads us to this gold cup target that shaded area in the center is a 1 to 15 or 1 to 20 uh, ratio of coffee to water. So what does that mean? One gram of coffee to 15 grams of water or one gram of coffee to 20 grams of water. So the most common in between there are 16, 17, and 18. Every morning I brew my coffee 16 to 17 uh, grams of water per gram of coffee and that's very easy to do on a scale. Why do we do that? So if you trace the lines diagonally, you can see on the right-hand side and on the top side, you can trace it around to uh, 
40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, and you see these oblique lines. Okay, so if you trace those oblique lines, this is basically where you can fall uh, anywhere along the bottom or left hand side. So if you extract um, from 18 to 22 percent of that soluble yield, then you might be able to fall within that golden cup range. And likewise, if you extract anywhere from 1.2 to 1.45, that percentage soluble concentration, you're going to land within that range. So look at the oblique lines that cross through our golden, our golden cup standard, right? That's going to be 55, 60, 65, and 70. Those are the ideal targets for one liter of water used that you should put into that Chemex or that French press. If you do a smaller cup, you know, 330, you're just going to take a third of that. Or if you do 500 liters. So you can do the math. But basically, um, we start with that. If you use a one liter Chemex, 55 grams of coffee, but you want only one cup, say 300 milliliters, how much coffee do you need? 55 divided by 1,000 is how many grams divided by 300? I'll let you do the math. So this is the gold cup standard and we wanted to introduce it especially because the barista should understand the variables and relationships that affect extraction and strength according to the golden brewing ratios defined by the SCA. So this has continued from the AE and the AA onto the SCA. And I encourage you to do more, you know, if you need to look at this further, talk to friends, barista experts uh, nearby, Google search, and we'll also put up um, uh, SEA Gold Standard Brew Chart on our website. Okay, we'll finish with this slide here on extraction before we go on to water next. But something that can happen is uh, what if a customer comes in and say you're working at a coffee shop they buy some coffee beans and they ask you please grind them fine fine for me I like strong coffee well you know many years ago uh, it seems like a different lifetime I worked at Starbucks and this was actually a common request what did they mean though they like strong coffee did they like strength or did they like bitterness or did they like extraction you know, honestly, back then, I didn't know enough from my training, nor did my customers know enough to specifically mean what they, or understand what they meant. However, what we need to understand about extraction is depicted on this bottom, or center, bottom center photo, and that's the percentage of the ground coffee that is extracted or dissolved as solids into the final brew. Okay, so if you have, uh, look at this coffee bean here, if you have a coffee, a bed of coffee in a filter, and you pour water over it, the most you can ever dissolve from that coffee matter is 30%. So if you put 100 grams in and you pour water, it'll pour water over it all day long, the most you're going to extract is 30 grams of that 100, which means you could take that coffee out of the filter, dry it, and there would be 70 grams of used coffee left over, but 30 grams of that would have dissolved into the cup. However, those 30 grams are not desirable for taste. Only 18 to 22 percent is desirable. Okay, so this is, this has to do with the surface area of the coffee grounds and as the water uh, interacts with them. So as we're pouring that uh, 1,000 milliliters, one liter of coffee through, what happens is, is we develop dissolve just that 18 to 22 percent it ends up only being a strength of 1.25 to 1.45 1.2 to 1.45 in our final coffee cup most of that cup of coffee is water and so uh, this is a relationship right 98 to 99 percent of that coffee is water and uh, it just depends on how much we're extracting from the coffee Okay, so extraction is pulling soluble matter from the ground coffee. And then strength is the relationship of how much coffee has been dissolved in relation to the water in.
in the cup of coffee.